Hey everyone, welcome to your fifth DNA Master tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to run the blast function. So if you watched previous tutorials, you know that we skipped over, or some of us skipped over the blast genes option of the auto annotation process. Um, but now we're going to have to do this anyway. So I warned you guys that we would have to do it eventually, and this is the time for that. So if you already blasted your genes, you may still want to watch this video just so you know for future reference how to blast single genes and everything like that. This will require some time, um, given a couple hours maybe. So during this time, you'll need consistent internet access, and you'll need to kind of leave your computer alone during this time as well. To begin the blast process, go up to Genome and click Blast All Genes. So these should be the default settings for your blast here. So 100, 10, 20, 110, 3, 1, and 100. You can actually go ahead and lower this number. There's really no need to save 100 hits from the server. So I usually keep that around 20 max. The next thing I want to point out to you guys is this little um, box of text here. Off peak hours for large batch jobs are 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern Time. What this is, is NCBI actually alters some of the parameters um, for larger blasting jobs. So this would be considered a larger blast job because there's over 100 genes to blast. Um, so right now we're in peak hours as you'll see here in the bottom left hand corner So during peak hours the load on the servers is a little heavier and your blasting may take a little bit longer Sometimes if you want you can blast all the genes overnight It won't take as long and may save you some time later on and before we hit blast all I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit about this process So what this is going to do when we hit blast all is it's going to send each gene or each genes protein sequence to the NCBI server the NCBI is going to search the database for things that are already stored in the database with uh, similar sequences and once it does that DNA master is going to retrieve those results and bring them back here into the DNA master program so like I said this is a very powerful tool you have to do this actually minimum of two times for each gene during um, a single annotation we'll have to do it again before we submit the genome to be quality control tested so it is important that you know how to do it and how to do it properly now this is going to take a very long time as I mentioned and the program is actually unusable during this time so you can just leave the program running as soon as you hit blast all it's gonna say you know not responding sometimes and it may look like the program froze but just be patient because um, it does take a lot of time so we're gonna go ahead and click blast all and you'll see it has a little bit of a log down here it tells you when the thing was started and every so often it'll uh, paste some more updates into this section where you can um, view the status of your blast you can also look in the bottom left hand corner you'll see progress again so right now it's beginning to send all of the requests to the server and also if you notice in the bottom right hand corner this is the total progress in percentage so this gene genome is going to take a little bit of time it's over 100 genes and I'm sure you guys um, who are doing annotations are also experiencing similar genome sizes so it may take a little bit of time as mentioned many times now but just pay attention to this little bar you'll see that increase as well as the log so like I said you can't use the program during this time so we're just gonna wait it out I'll see you guys when it's finished alright guys so as you can see the blast finally finished up and here is the log that it exported so you can see um, what the program was doing um, at you know certain times and everything like that so once it's finished you can just simply exit out of this log and you'll see here genome blast has completed that's what we want we can also exit out of this one here and we'll be back in our main window the first thing we want to do is to save the file definitely so we're going to go to the documentation recreate the documentation and then we'll go up to file save and then just like I showed you guys before We'll just change the number up by one. This way we have a file now with all of our blast results saved and we won't have to go back and do that until a later date. So now that you have everything blasted, you'll be able to go to the blast tab of each gene. So here we'll go over to blast and as you'll see, we have some results. Um, these are the blast results that were, that were retrieved from the NCBI server. And as you go down the list here, keep going down, you'll see that almost every gene has some blast results so that's good generally the more results you have the better 
um, I'll teach you guys in a later tutorial on how to tell what is a good result and what is not a good result. But that's pretty much it. Now you have your blast results saved into the file and we're one step closer to beginning our annotation. And that's pretty much it guys, so thanks for watching, hope you learned something in this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one.